Hey, Sam. Do you want to go camping? You want to camp? You want to sleep by the lake? Okay. So getting ready for this trip, I just got everything laid out here. The best thing to do, if you don't lay everything out, you generally tend to forget stuff. And then when you do, you generally tend to forget stuff. So I usually start planning early to get everything laid out. Some of this is some newer stuff because it's something I've never done with the camping in the back of the truck, especially with the dog. Um, these are just poles that you set up and they've got little spikes and some guy line in there so that you can attach your tarp to them. I'm gonna do a tarp shelter over the back of the truck. Some honcho liners or whoobies as they call them. I have two of them. I'm gonna lay those down in the back of the bed, kind of put a barrier between the metal and where we're sleeping to help insulate us a little bit. This is gonna be the tarp that I'm gonna run over the top for the shelter. And then I have a sleeping bag that is actually a military issue sleeping bag system. Very heavy, but you're in a vehicle and you're not backpacking, so it's warm and does the trick and it's a little tougher for him just in case he's crawling around on me. Normally I take a backpacking sleeping mat, but this time I'm taking a twin air mattress. So he'll have somewhere to sleep with me as well. He generally almost sleeps on top of me. <laughs> so this is a backpacking chair. This is the REI one. I started out with a Walmart one, but we'll get more to gear stuff later. Some extra 550 cord because I will be tying up the poles and doing guy lines. So I always wanna have a little extra of that. Headlamp, thank you Afghanistan deployment. I've used this for years and it's it's a tank. I have a Mora knife that will be used for batoning wood. Also, any kind of things I want to cut up there, any little camp chores. And then when Sam was a puppy, he decided it needed some dimples on it. Um, hatchet for splitting bigger wood. This makes it a lot faster if you do have bigger chunks. Moving on to the kitchen. So I'm taking two of these because this one's getting lower. And this is a brand new one, just in case. I do like to cook over the fire, but for my coffee in the morning, I want it fast, and that's a guarantee, boil the water quickly. So this is a titanium long-handled spoon so that you can get down into these. Also have some dehydrated sweet potatoes and vegetables. You can usually buy those at like Trader Joe's, and they go a long way, add them to soups and stuff like that. And then two packets of oatmeal for breakfast in the morning. I also keep a, I usually have one in my pocket, but I keep an extra bandana just because they have a lot of uses out there, usually for picking up the pots off the fire. A little hygiene kit, a little toothbrush, toothpaste, some wet wipes, not a whole lot of stuff. This is beat up from my backpacking things. It's the same bag I've had for years using it. And a first aid kit's got some, some bandages and some tape just in case you're hiking. Some super glue, rubber gloves, some hydration pills. Just the basic stuff, just something to get you through. I also keep a kit in my truck, so. This is my cook pot. It's a Stanley cook pot with a cup that you can get at Walmart. This one is obviously beat up because I've used it a lot, so it's very stained. And then inside of it, I also keep a fire kit. So there's some 550 that's got fire starter in it. Little fire starters I've made at home with wax. I actually got that from somebody else on YouTube. So these things work great and I've used these for the last couple years and I, I haven't found anything else cheaper or that works better. There's a fire steel in there as well. And then the stove that attaches to these to boil the water for my coffee in the morning. Some of the stuff's a little heavier, but I'm not backpacking. So the durable stuff tends to get used more when I'm not on the trail. This is a coffee strainer from GSI. It's supposed to be for pour over, but I just cowboy coffee and then strain it. So I don't have a bunch of grounds in there. Food bag. Um, also got some snacks. I always feel like I never have enough food, but usually don't eat it all. But if I have it, then I can use it later. This is my little food bag. I'll keep coffee in here, maybe some creamers or dehydrated milk, uh, just random stuff like that. Some sleep tea in there, a couple packets of honey, some olive oil, whatever I need for my food to get ready to make that. Being in the desert, I still take a rain jacket every single time I go out, whether I'm hiking or camping or whatever. Uh, it gets pretty windy out here, especially in this time of year. So this is like another good layer to help cut the wind because it doesn't breathe. So it'll help keep you warmer. Also taking an excessive beanie. It's only supposed to be down to about 50, but 
like I said, the wind gets cold and sometimes out here it feels colder than the temperature. So have it and don't need it, great. If I need it, I have it. And then I also take a puffy, same thing. Even this summer when I go hiking, I have this in my bag just because you never know. And it depends on if you're in the mountains. For Sam's little kit here, um, this is just some treats because he's never been camping. So I'm gonna reward him when he acts well. And then his dog food for two days, I've measured that out beforehand so I don't take too much, but obviously I wanna have enough to feed him. And then I'm gonna let him share some of my dinner with me anyway, cause I'm gonna bring a steak. And then a little collapsible dog bowl. They have a kit online that was a lot more expensive, but this was $3 at Petco. So it will do the trick for food and water. So it should be a good time. That's the whole setup there. Minus what I'll have in my pocket and I'll go over more of that a little later. He's in the truck, but are you ready, buddy? I'm ready to not sit down. <laughs> Also did not realize that the route that I was taking was going to take me directly through Valley of Fire State Park so it was nine bucks but it was definitely something cool to look at while driving through there so nice little added bonus So we made it. Um, he's still not good in car rides, but <laughs> we'll get him there. Uh, he has a problem with wanting to see everything, so he's constantly standing up. It's a little busier out here in the spot that I wanted was taken, but we found another spot. Um, it's kind of on a ridge. It's got some good views and stuff, which I'll show you guys later. And then I'm about to set up our shelter for the night. It's going to be a little colder than I thought it was going to be. It was supposed to be down in like the high 40s, and now we're showing. Um, high 30s so luckily I brought a little extra because I'm usually worried that that's gonna happen so that's fine um, I've got our poles our little tarp shelter the twin air mattress our tarp that's gonna go over the back of the bed which I'm gonna show you and then the two blankets I'm gonna put down on the bottom of the bed try to give us some insulation and then I also have you can just rarely see it here in the frame a wool blanket I'm gonna make another pallet next to the twin bed just in case he rolls off I actually keep another wool blanket in the truck so I think I'm going to double him up just because it's cold and then possibly have something to throw over him after he falls asleep. So he's doing all right on the leash right now, the 40 foot of rope. And then we'll see. He hasn't been tangled up too much, but we've got a good fire pit that's already set up. So we don't have to set up a new one. So I'm going to get this set up and then get the firewood maybe processed a little bit and get a line in the water and see if we can catch some fish. This is the time whenever Tony realized that the air valve on his mattress was open and that it was not going to hold air, even though he kept there. trying and trying. That took a little longer to blow up than I thought. Um, it's new, so I haven't used it much, but 
Cut the blankets down underneath, bed's blown up. So now we'll be moving on to throwing the mats out and then work on the tarp. So, it doesn't look great. Um, I've never done this before, so I wasn't sure how I was gonna attach it to the corners of the truck in the front, because normally you'd like attach it to like a topper, and I don't have a topper. So, I think I need to maybe pull it more so that it's on top of the truck, as opposed to around the sides on the cab. So, I'm gonna readjust and hit it again. You living the tough life? I said that I was going to figure this out. Um, I'm not gonna do the two pulls off the corners. Like I originally wanted to do one like off this way and one this way, and it's just, it's not gonna work. Um, which is kind of the joy of figuring this out, right? So I'm gonna do one pull in the middle and put it out taut. So it'll make like a V shape over the top. And then I'm gonna take each side and put them over the corners of the truck bed and pin them out to the ground. So it'll be tight and then we'll, it'll kind of be like a little tent anyway and it'll actually close us in better when it might help us get some better heat built up in there so we will see okay so i got the center pole up um if you saw it fought me and fell over but that's why we do this, so that we can learn how to do it. I am about to tie some guy line up to go on the corners of the tarp so that I can tie it out to the ground. I'm gonna show you guys the knot that I use to do it. It's just a bullen knot. I'm probably gonna not do this very well. So if you just take your end there and make a roll in it, right? So you just get the little piece in there. So you wanna go up, say up through the hole. I hope this isn't looking like total crap. And then go around the back of the tree and then back down through the hole probably the worst knot tying video ever but it makes a knot and it won't slip it's the good thing is, is then you can take it and either do a toggle or loop it on itself to hook through something so thought that'd been interesting stuff i can do it again later um i might after i see how bad this one looked all right so that i don't have to actually tie my string onto the corner here towards something like that I hit the pull off. I'm just gonna put that bowl knot that I made through there. I cut some toggles out of some firewood. They fit my loop. Hopefully they're small enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they'll go in there and then it just acts like a wedge against it. So then you can pull it out and then when you're done you just pull that toggle out of there and it all comes apart. All right so we'll try this again. This is the bowl one. I was talking about so you just make a little bite in it right and then you're gonna go up a little more length here it gets kind of crazy when it's small so you go up through the hole and you go around the back of the tree right back down through the hole and then snug everything together that's it all adjustment, readjustment, and then more adjustment. It's not fantastic, but I think it's gonna work. Um, ended up doing a pull there over the sides of the bed. I'm actually laying on the bed now. And then there's another pull. It's ugly, I know. It's wedged in there. It helped if we had any friggin' trees out here. But yeah, this is gonna be the bed. The wool blanket's over there for if he rolls off. I think we'll be good, um, as long as it's not too, too, too windy. It won't be bad, there's little areas on the side to like, keep crap. Yeah, and a pretty nice view. I think your butt's in the shot. Mm-hmm. Come here. Hey, come here. 
Sam. All right, so I'm gonna process some wood and get this built up. Um, it's about one o'clock, so we probably have ooh, three and a half, four hours of daylight left. Um, yeah, he's not used to being in the sun all day, so he's taking water down, but um, just had to buy store-bought wood because there's not much wood out here. And then I'm going to process this down because these big old chunks don't want to burn very well but they make a good base i think i'm gonna do an upside down fire which i'll show a little bit later uh, we have the heavy stuff on the bottom and then thinner stuff going up kind of like a pyramid and then you line on the top and it burns slower that way um, it's, this wood's not great for cooking but it'll it'll do so one big thing when you split it a lot of times people try to like chop through it if you can get it blasted through the first time that's the easier way to do it. So if you have a little bit heavier hatchet handle, it works better. Um, being low also helps too. Because then if you miss it, you hit the ground and you don't hit your leg. So that's a tip. We'll see if we can do it. May not. Sometimes they don't break. But if you can get the driving force down instead of just chopping it, it makes it easier. And this one's going to fight me because it's on camera. All right, smaller piece for demonstration purposes. See, that one just popped. Some of the bigger ones don't want to do it though. This one's probably gonna go pretty easy. Yeah, you process it down so that your burning wood's about this big instead of these huge chunks will just smolder. Okay, so once you get your wood broke down to where it is not huge and totally unfriggin' manageable, if you have a knife, you can baton the wood down so then you can make it a little thinner. Um, depending on the knife, this is a little more that I've had forever and it works really well, but you just get it started on there, take another piece of wood and hammer, maybe. And then it wants to get stuck. It usually goes smoother than this, but since I'm recording it, it's not gonna wanna cooperate. It helps too if you put pressure on the back side of it while you hit it. Which is still not helping this one. Alright, take each shit. Then that happens sometimes. <laughs> uh you know, this doesn't happen when you're not trying to show people how to do it. Isn't that how education works? Bam. The knife out. Let's see if we can just he-man it. That's why I don't have nice clothes. Nope, it's not going to happen. So we'll try from the other end. And we're going to baton the wood down so that we can have smaller pieces for kindling. And this is the hardest piece of wood ever fucking made. Oh, it's because I'm doing it through a knot. That's the idea. It's usually not that hard. Yeah. Tell them. Do you want to tell them how to, how to make fire? No? Okay, so upside down fire. Thick pieces of wood on the bottom, uh, really close together so there's not a lot of airspace. I know you need air for fire, but you don't want these to burn fast. And most of this cheap wood is pine, so it burns fast anyway. It's not hard wood. Um, so then you do like three or four across the bottom, and then you turn it and go the other direction a little bit smaller, and then turn and go the other direction a little bit smaller. And on the top, you want to have some little kindling, <clears throat> these little strips that I'd busted off of there earlier. And then I'd try to get some 
sticks and some leaves and stuff so that you can whatever this is these are leaves I guess um, but you put leaves on there so that that'll catch and burn and then as it burns it burns down and drops little pieces of ash and fire into the bigger pieces and your wood lasts longer so especially if you're on limited wood or if you have to buy cheap wood because they don't have any out here what do you think oh you little burp on camera it's gross thanks for bud thank you all right so i wanted to get on here and discuss some politics and things going on in the world not really um <laughs> Being that that's like my least favorite subject. So we'll do a fireside chat with Sam. Because he's an attention whore. Um, no, but like whenever people go camping out here. Or they don't go camping. They're like, they talk about <clears throat> how they don't have the money for the gear. Or they don't have the knowledge or the skill base. Or whatever the case may be. You need to breathe a little harder in my ear. Um... When I started out, I, I bought a couple things. I think I had like a $100 tent, and I buy everything on sale. I still buy everything on sale. Um, I don't, very rarely I pay full price for anything. So REI has a lot of a lot of gear sales that are used, and the stuff will be used like didn't like fit, and they'll return it, and it's like $100 off. So I've got a lot of my bags that way. I got my first sleeping pad, which I still use, is... I think it was like $40. It was on sale. But you don't need a bunch of stuff. The first time I went, I actually didn't know I needed a sleeping pad. Because I was used to camping when I was a kid. And as a kid, you know, you sleep on the ground and it didn't bother you. Well, when you're in your 30s, it, it hurts. So, yeah, I got a Amazon sleeping bag that it was extremely heavy. I think it was a 30 degree bag, but it was like 30, 35 bucks. A little tent. And I just went and did it. Um, I didn't know how to process wood all that comes with with time you know a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of screwing stuff up a lot of trying to figure out what I was doing before I got to the point where you know I was confident at you are ruining this shot um, but it just takes time it takes time and effort and trying it like this tarp shelter did not go up did not you're killing me did not go up the way that I thought it was going to so it's still not what I want it to be, but I know more now than I did before, because before I was just guessing on how I was going to do it. So we'll see. Um, hopefully it doesn't blow around too much and get too crazy. But yeah, you just got to get out and do it. Uh, cheap stuff too, especially if you're military or if you know someone that's military, you probably have extra backpacks or people think that they need to go get a special high-speed fleece to wear when they're camping or something you can wear your military stuff just take your name tags off of it or go to a surplus store a lot of surplus stores this stuff's cheap it doesn't have to be pretty right you're you're going out in the middle of nowhere to do something so it's just getting out and trying it um i have friends of mine now actually some of them on youtube that have decided to start doing stuff and it you know people would start out with not knowing how to light a fire to now they're they're doing everything like a pro so it's all just experience. Um, you can even take, if you're doing car camping, it's even easier. Like backpacking is when people start looking at lightweight stuff and that's where you get the money. Because the lighter weight it is, the more expensive it tends to be. I think it'd be the other way around with less material, but whatever. I don't make it. But you can take like blankets and quilts and make little pallets like you used to and you slept over at your friend's house, you know? So you don't overcomplicate it. Um, you can go out there and do it and just get some cheap stuff or even you can go to Walmart and get stuff so I might do a video with all my first things or go with stuff that's just in the house in general for the most part just to show like you can do it especially if you're car camping and it doesn't have to be a bunch of lightweight stuff or expensive stuff and you can get out and enjoy it and like I said it won't always be ideal we're lucky out here in Nevada it's 70 degrees out now and then I'll have a beanie on later and it'll be 30 you know 35 almost maybe 40 degrees in the morning so it's gonna be cold but if you wait until the weather's perfect you'll miss you know three quarters of the season so you'll get there and you can always reach out to me too I love helping people and helping people figure stuff out so stupid questions are the ones you don't ask so ask me because I do this all the time because I don't like sitting at home do I 
So you people are in the bed of the truck. Um, it's my little cook pot. I kind of went over it in my, when I was going over gear, but what I keep in there, I didn't really pull it out. I always keep this stuff in there. So these are the fire starters that I make. I'm going to use later. And then that's the little stove that goes on to, it just screws onto these canisters. So I'll use that to make my coffee. And then the fire steel. You've been following me on Instagram and stuff for a while. You've probably seen me use this because I've had the same one for a long, a long time. But, well, there it goes. So it makes sparks um, and they'll catch stuff. You can do it with regular tinder and you can always just use a lighter if you're not all special like I am. Um, I just think it's cooler because you're camping and it's a kind of a more primitive way to start it. Uh, give you something else to do. Yeah, lighters work too. So don't don't get too crazy. I'm thinking that's kind of the kind of the premise of this video is to want to get more people out and doing this stuff. Even though I I don't like having a big crowd when I'm out camping, but people get out doing this is gonna keep keeps me from being depressed. So maybe it can help you do the same. Yeah, that's just what's in the little the little Stanley cook kit. And I think the cup came off in the bag because now I'm realizing it's gone. There's a cup too, a cup cup thing that goes on the, and it's all a little kit. You gonna push it all the way to the lake? All gone. It's a little early, but I want to do this when it's daylight. So I got this little guy that I made. This one's actually really thick, so it doesn't want to rip, but there's going to be a little spot. Where you can, good Lord, rip it open. It's going to have the little fibers. And that's what's going to catch. And it wax all the hand. So for the upside down fire, after you get it stacked, you just put everything on top. You're going to take this and your scraper you can get sparks so you want the sparks to land on the cotton to catch and there it goes so that's gonna burn like a candle for like five minutes and that's gonna start to catch everything down below it Now look at that. We got a fire there, Bob. Now it's gonna burn all down through there. And he'll slowly back up, I'm certain. So this little bad boy is going to go right on the fire. Um, you should be careful not to burn your hands, but that's got the dehydrated veggies and sweet potatoes in there. So get that going. So 
just absolutely gorgeous. The sun starts going down. Everything starts changing. See, I told you there's a bunch of people out here. The bed. Hmm. Uh, the reason that there's no footage for the morning is because whenever I got Sam in the back of the bed, he freaked out. Um, he wouldn't calm down. He was trampling me. <clears throat> Any little noise he heard, he was crying. And he probably did that for, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes, and I couldn't get him to calm down. So it was a big day for him. It was a lot. I probably should have. I oh, hope that wind's not too bad. Um, should have camped out in the backyard with him so I think I'm going to do that a few times and just try to get him used to actually being outside um, of the house more so he, he did pretty good he was pretty good in the car and he was very good actually when we were at camp I had him off leash for a while so didn't end up making it through the whole night but it's a learning process so it was still fun we had a good time I think he enjoyed it and then I had to get home and make him black again because all the dirt he was almost a brown he almost turned into a chocolate lab so Thanks for watching. If you guys have any comments or uh, questions or anything like that, just put them down in the comments below, and then I'll try to get back to you on that. So I'm here to help. I want to I see more people get out there. So I hope you enjoyed. Thanks.